Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. And in today's video we are going to talk about this bad boy right here, the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 4th power times 1 minus x, whole thing to the 4th power over x squared plus 1, the x. And it's not just about this integral right here, we want to prove something today. We want to show that since I am becoming a teacher, sometimes I have to tell my, my students well, if you don't like working with pi, then just use 22 over 7. And we want to show that those two aren't equal. And to be more clear, we want to show that 22 over 7 is greater than pi. So we want to show this today. Let me take another pen. Okay, so that's what we want to show. And to show this, we are going to use this right here. Hmm. How can we do that? So, at first we can observe something. So, if we plug in x values right here, for example, minus 1, then that would yield that since those are all even powers, that would mean that all negative numbers would become positive. So, the integrand right here is strictly positive. And we are going to say without any restrictions that we are working with real numbers right here. And also, we are working on a positive interval from 0 to 1. So that means that this integral right here is greater than 0 in any case. And with this out of the way, let's get started with the integral. So, what can we do at first? Maybe we could at first um, factor out this x minus, uh, 1 minus x to the 4th power and see what we've got. So this is just equal to that. this is just equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the fourth power times 1 minus 2x squared uh, 2, 2 x plus x squared but squared over x squared plus 1 dx. And now we have to somehow expand this right here. So let's do this. So this is the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 4th power times. Okay, so that's 1. Uh, let me write this out really quick. Okay, so that's 1 minus 2x plus x squared times 1 minus 2x plus x squared. So the first term is 1. And the second term is minus 2x. So the first term is plus x squared. So that's 9. And minus 2x, 10. And then we've got positive 4x squared plus positive 4x squared. And after that we get minus 2x to the 3rd power. After that we get minus 2x to the 3rd power. Minus 2x to the 3rd power. And then minus 2x to the 3rd power. And then we get plus x to the 4th power. So that's kind of a mess. Let's see if we can simplify anything. Okay, let's do this. So this integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 4th power times. So this one is just a constant. So we get this. Next thing. So that's minus 2x. So that's minus 4x. And well, those are all the values for x. So that's minus 4x. And then x squared. So this is 2x squared, 5x squared, 6x squared. So plus 6x squared. We've got this, and then minus 4, x to the 3rd power, and after that plus x to the 4th power, over x squared plus 1 dx. <laughs> Whew, that's kind of work. That's some work to do. And now we can distribute this x to the 4th power into all the other stuff. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 4th power minus 4x to the 5th power plus 6x to the 6th power minus 4x to the 7th power plus x to the 8th power over x squared plus 1 dx. And here's the most difficult part. We are now going to use polynomial long division on this fraction right here to expand it a bit. To make it a bit easier, maybe. I'm going to approach this problem slowly so that everyone can follow what I'm doing. So, the first thing we have to do, x to the 8th power divided by x squared. So x to the 8th divided by x squared. That would yield x to the 6th power. And that would mean that x to the 6th power times x squared plus 1 is equal to x to the 8th power plus x to the 6th power. Okay. And now we can to subtract this term right here. So minus x to the 8th power plus x to the 6th power. 
And now let's see what we've got. So what's the remainder? That's just 0 minus 4 x to the 7 power plus 7 uh, minus, I'm sorry, <laughs> minus 5 x to the 6th power and then minus 4 x to the 5th power plus x to the 4th power. So, now that's the highest degree, so let's talk about that. So, minus 4 x to the 7th power over x squared. Okay, so that would here, that's minus 4 times x to the 5th power. And that would mean that we've got to multiply this with this factor right here. So, minus 4 x to the 5th power times x squared plus 1 would yield minus 4 x to the 7th power minus 4 x to the 5th power. And now we can subtract this term. And then minus, minus 4 x to the 7th power minus 4 x to the 5th power. Okay, so what do we get now? So the first term is 0 and then that's, this cancels out, so that's nice. And then minus 5 x to the 6th power plus x to the 4th power. Um, that's a positive, I'm terribly sorry. Okay, so that, that's positive. Okay, so that's what we end up with and that's the highest degree now. So that means that 5 x to the 6th power divided by x squared would yield 5x to the 4th power. Multiplied by this factor right here, this is just 5x to the 4th power times x squared plus 1 equals to 5x to the 6th power plus 5x to the 4th power. And now we have to subtract this. So minus 5x to the 6th power plus 5x to the 4th power. So what do we end up with? So this cancels out, so that's 0 and then minus 4x to the 4th power. And that's the highest degree now of the remainder. So once again, <laughs> dividing it by x squared. So minus 4x to the 4th power divided by x squared would yield minus 4x to the 2nd power. So that would mean minus 4x squared times x squared plus 1 is equal to... Okay, so this is minus 4x to the 4th power minus 4x squared. Now subtract this again. So minus, minus 4 x to the 4th power minus 4 x squared. What we end up with, this is just 0 and this is positive 4 x squared. And now dividing this term once again by x squared. So 4 x squared over x squared would yield 4. And now we are going to multiply it by this factor once again. That's kind of a mess. <laughs> so this is 4 times x squared plus 1, and this is just 4x squared plus 4. Okay, and now we are going to subtract this once again. And what do we end up with? So this is minus 4x squared plus 4, and we end up with 0 minus 4. And this is the remainder now. And it has a degree of 0 at the moment, and we are going to multiply it by 1 over x squared plus 1. So what do we end up with? So that's the first value, x to the 6th power. Second value is minus 4, x to the 5th power. Next value, plus 5 times x to the 4th power. Next value, minus 4, x squared. Next value is positive 4, and then minus 4 over x squared plus 1. And we can plug this result into our integral and see what we get. Here we go. So that's quite easy. Let's talk about every term. So those are pretty easy to integrate right now. So at first we get, okay, so that's x to the 7th power over 7. I hope you know how to integrate simple polynomials. I hope you do. <laughs> and then minus 4 over 6 x to the 6th power. And then plus 5 over 5, so this is just 1, x to the 5th power and minus 4 over 3 x to the 3rd power plus 4 times x from 0 to 1 and then minus this integral from 0 to 1 of 4 over x squared plus 1 dx. If you don't know what the value of this integral is, just take a look in the description, there's a link to the corresponding video. 
So we know that this is just, we can bring this forward to the outside because of the linearity and this is just the inverse tangent of x. So this would yield minus 4 times the inverse tangent of x at the points 0 and 1. And now we can proceed and see what we get when we plug in the limits. So what do we get right now? Let's talk about this one right here at first. So if we plug in 0 into this inverse tangent, that's just 0, so this cancels out. And if we plug in 1 into here, that would mean the inverse tangent of 1 is just pi over 4. So at first we get minus 4 pi over 4, and you see this is just pi. So those two would cancel out uh, minus pi because of the negative sign. So plugging in 0 into those values would just yield 0 on every term because it's well, 0 times something all the time, so this cancels out. And now we are plugging in 1 in the, uh, into those things, so at first we get 1 over 7, and then minus 4 over 6, and this is just 2 over 3. So let's simplify this, so that's 2 over 3. Next thing, this was just 1, so plus 1, and then minus 4 over 3, and plus 4. And let's see what we get if we expand this those fractions and add them together. So what do we get? This is now equal to. So this is 1 over 7 and we can say that uh, 1 is just 7 over 7. So at first we get 8 over 7. So this is just minus 6 over 3 and this is just 2. Um, yeah, this is just 2. Okay. And then we also got a 4, and the 4 is just, let's expand it by 7 over 7. So this is plus 28 over 7. And minus pi. Don't forget the minus pi. Now we can bring those two together. So this at the moment is just 36 over 7 minus 2 minus pi. And well, we can expand this by 7 over 7. So this would yield 14 over 7. Now if we subtract this, that would mean that this is just 22 over 7 minus pi. Here are our two magical values. And don't forget, we noticed in the beginning that this is greater than 0. So this means if we add pi on both sides, that 22 over 7 is indeed greater than pi. And that's what we wanted to show given that those are real-valued functions right here. There was also a Putnam axiom problem, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like, and up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya!